last uh, or a couple episodes ago, we spoke about the swap meet trial. And I believe that recently you've sort of um, done a follow-up study, a similar study to that, but with athletes. Perhaps if someone has didn't tune into the swap meet trial episode we did, we okay. could start with just a higher level, what that was yeah. and what the main takeaways were from that. And I'll even go back to when I sort of got the idea. I was opening the New York Times three different times. And there's this full page ad like slamming all the new plant-based meats saying these things are dog food. These things are crap. These things, I can't believe people are eating them. Um, maybe they're good for the environment, but they're full of uh, coconut oil for the saturated fat. They're high in sodium and they're ultra processed. So your cholesterol is going up, your blood pressure is going up, and your weight's going up. And I thought, ah, that's my superpower. I, I do that kind of study. That wouldn't really be that hard. I could give people a couple servings a day of plant meat and a couple servings a day of red meat. In fact, I bet we could deliver that. I'm not going to do the feeding study that Kevin Hall does. I'm not going to incarcerate them or domicile them. But yeah, so for, now I have to remember there's different studies do different things. This is eight weeks each. It's a crossover. So everybody did both things. And this is before the pandemic or after? Before. We finished this one before the pandemic. So I think we enrolled 40 and 36 finished. So we have good retention. And LDL cholesterol went down, not up. And that was pretty easy to predict because, yes, coconut uh, fat is saturated, but there was less saturated fat in sure. the plant-based alternative. Maybe a little meat. bit more fiber or was the fiber match? Oh, no. And it was fi – no, it wasn't fiber match. All we did was swap out the meat. Everything else was intended to be the same. And, okay, just a little side note to address that comment would be we said, you know, you're on your own for the rest. We're not buying you the rest of the food. But we do want to say that if it's the burger – and you're having a white bun, and we don't want you to have a white bun. But if you have a white bun in one phase, you need to have it in both phases. And if you put on uh, uh, iceberg lettuce on one, you got to put iceberg lettuce on both. But if you put the whole grain, organic, foofy bun on one, you got to put it on both. And if you have the farmer's market lettuce and tomato on one burger, you got to have it on both. That kind of ties into one of your principles, which I think is compared to what and with what or something like that yeah uh-huh <laughs> instead of what and with what so you got to make sure those are and this is the other thing that's that's big for me in the studies i do is matching versus mismatching so go back to nutrition and just pills it's really easy enough to change your diet as soon as you have to start changing your, your diet how much do you change and do you ask uh and do you set it up so that one group does get the iceberg lettuce and the crappy cardboard tomatoes and the other one gets the nice stuff. I really try to make it so both groups have the optimal. So in swap meat, the red meat we got was from a San Francisco delivery company that did organic and regenerative and all, all those nice things. So, And that's important because you probably otherwise would have got pushback on that. Yeah. And, and important to me. I want to do good science. I don't want to have yeah, the crappy diet versus I want, okay, if you're really curious if these two things work head to head, you should pick right. the best of each one. So when we did, LDL cholesterol went down, not up. Blood pressure didn't change. So that let's just do the sodium really quickly. So yes, the um, Beyond Meat burgers have more sodium than ground beef. But guess what? When people get ground beef, they salt it. And so by the time you looked at it at the end, the sodium intake was identical in the two groups and the blood pressure didn't change. We also looked at TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, which is, uh, if you're on Twitter, you'll see it's a little controversial. Some people think it's a very cool emerging new risk factor that Stan Hazen from the Cleveland Clinic identified about a decade ago. I'm very much involved with the American Heart Association and for the last decade. When you go to the annual American Heart Conference, there's always a TMAO session because people are really intrigued by TMAO. There's a bunch of people that don't like it at all, but that was our primary outcome, and it went down in the um, Beyond Meat Eaters. Why do some people not like it as a, as a risk factor? So they, they think it's not well established enough. So picture finding these things out. Like if you looked at the history of cholesterol, let's say, there was total cholesterol. Then there was LDL and HDL. Then the HDLs got split into small, dense particles and large, puffy, fluffy particles. And so in this process, TMAO is pretty new. Um, so it's plausible, but nobody's done a randomized control trial to see if you live or die. 
which is a huge frustration for me because most most of the really good questions in nutrition, you can't do a randomized controlled trial. It would take too long. Mm -hmm. if, if you're hoping to keep somebody out of the hospital. So if your outcome is lipids or blood pressure or TMAO, I can do that in a month or two or three. Um, but if you really want to see if this is saving someone from a heart attack. Yeah, like a hard, hard outcome. You have to have a hard, hard clinical outcome mm. costing money, costing lives. Mm. You have to go like on. Like pretty med or something. Yeah. And those are bazillions of dollars and, and decades of time to run them. And then you only get to ask one question too. So you, you have to be very specific about the population, the dose, the duration, things like that. And so when you're all done, at the end of the day, you said, ha. And actually, you could do this with swap meet easily. Ha, it worked. Yeah, but how about half as much? How about twice as much? How about longer? I said, well, I, I didn't do that one. I guess I got to do it all over again. I can't possibly answer. Well, that's another reason to get some more grant money. Yeah, right. And so if I'm clever, I can write the grant and get it to work and then do the follow-up study. So anyway, basically, that was swap meet. The things that they got trashed for in the newspaper of getting worse, didn't they even lost weight? Not much weight, but they lost pretty much on average, they lost a pound or two which normally, I don't know how statistically sophisticated you want to be here, but clinically a pound or two is not very relevant, but it was fascinating. Almost everyone lost a pound or two. And so it's, if it's very consistent, it can still be statistically significant, even though it's not clinically relevant. But I kind of liked it because the story was, oh, because of Kevin Hall's study, they're going to gain weight because of the saturated fat, their cholesterol will go up because of the sodium, the blood pressure will go up. None of those things happen. And TMAO went down. So it was a win for the plant-based meat if the question is instead of what? Instead of red meat. Right. Not instead of legumes. Instead of lentils. People said, yeah, but are you saying they should eat these instead of lentil? No, <laughs> that's not how I designed it. That's not the interesting question. Mm -hmm. Very frustrating. I think I recall you saying that early on in the piece, maybe it was years before when you came across beyond burger you you were not a, a real advocate for these foods at the beginning yeah i wasn't a, yeah i'm a lentil man i want chickpeas and lentils and whole foods i'm definitely a whole food person uh, and yet soberingly you know i've been doing this for 30 years and it's amazing how little i've accomplished um, I published these studies and I, I have a real fun story that I tell mocking myself where I did one study that worked and that people weren't going to do it because it involved cooking and shopping. So even though I spent all this money and time, they said, great for science, I'm not changing. And then I did another study with real garlic and garlic pills. I was trying to lower cholesterol. Four years, $1.4 million, nothing worked, nothing lowered the cholesterol, not the pills, or the real garlic from Gilroy. And I presented the results and a couple of people came up after and said, so where do you get the pills? <laughs> and I said, why? They said, well, we wanna get them. I said, I just spent four years of my life showing you it doesn't work. And said, no, we think it works for us. Mm -hmm. And so for this whole red meat thing, especially now that I've been much more into the environment than the past, I've been saying, yes, there's all kinds of health and environmental reasons to eat less red meat. And that doesn't make much of a dent for a whole lot of people. So I became much more open-minded to, ah, I get it. These guys are trying to make something that looks, smells, tastes, everything is the same. At one level that bothers me, but I'm watching some people switch. They're willing to make a dent. And so, yep, I think there's like a hundred answers that we need and this isn't the answer but it, it's one option that I like having out there. Mm -hmm.